Live Q&A now, so be like Hunter. Use hashtag Cal with your questions in. He wants to know if the offense would be more efficient if we utilized more two tight end sets and featured Jarwin and Witten on the field at the same time. The answer is no. You can make an argument maybe you should throw more with two tight ends, but think about it this way. Who are you pulling off the field if you're taking Jarwin on the field along with Witten? Are you pulling off Randall Cobb? Gallup Cooper? Absolutely not. I don't think that's the route to go. And most importantly, the Cowboys' best run success this year has come out of shotgun in 11 personnel because you spread the defense out. So I don't think the offense would be any more efficient. Frankly, I don't want 13 to 3 tight end personnel. I don't want 12 personnel that much anymore. All right, Eric, are there any injuries that we should be worrying about right now? Overall, they're fairly healthy. Joe Thomas missed the game with Miss Predators with an illness. I think he's going to be fine. The ones you're going to focus in on are you got to pay attention to Mari Cooper and Lael Collins. Tank seems good to go. Zach Martin is going to be limited to all practice going forward, but he'll be good to go. Those are the two to be concerned about. All right, Anthony Meatball says draft Tua and trade him, maybe get a haul for him. It's a fun idea in, in, in concept, but, but in principle, you're not going to be able to draft somebody and then trade him immediately for more than you got. Now, you can trade the pick if you want, but if you draft Tua, you're, are you going to keep him for a year? Then you're wasting an entire year of a you know, first year or first contract. That's not great. You're not going to play him because you have Dak Prescott. So drafting Tua works in Madden. It's just not going to work in real life, though. You can trade the pick if he's still on the board somehow. All right, Sebastian Schaefer. With the Patriots having the top defense and Dallas having the top offense, do you project any glimmer of hope the Cowboys come out victorious from this game? Brady has been shaky, too. You can absolutely beat the Patriots. Now, I wouldn't consider it the most likely outcome, but there absolutely is hope for this team. And I think the Cowboys in particular, if they execute and don't start terribly slowly again, I think they'll end up being okay. I really do. Food review, if Dak wins out and makes a huge run in the postseason, would you give him $40 million a year? I mean, I don't want to because that's a lot of money, but what's the alternative, right? In this scenario, you could try and franchise tag Dak Prescott, but at that point, he's going to want to get a long-term deal. Could he potentially hold out? Is that a situation you want to have? You run the risk of fair or not getting flacco'd, but I don't think Dak is Joe Flacco. I think we've seen way more success in the regular season from Dak Prescott than we have ever seen out of Joe Flacco. I don't want to Kirk Cousins myself either. At that point, you just kind of have to pay him because you have no alternative. You can't just draft somebody. That's not that easy to do at all. Spencer Hathen, do you think we should draft a left tackle? I think it depends on, on when you want to, to draft a left tackle. If, if, if you want to... You know, set something up and, you know, take one in round three, four, five, six, seven, every time. Do it all the time. If you want to spend a premium pick, eh, I don't I don't know if that's the best route. You've invested a lot in your offensive line. I, maybe you just decide, you know what, let's roll with Tyron. Maybe Connor Williams can become your left tackle and you can move McGovern into left guard. Maybe that's an option. I don't mind taking a guy to be a swing tackle, maybe a developmental guy. I just don't think you should invest another high pick in a left tackle or offensive line in general. All right, question for you guys now. So get them in the comments for me. When is it okay to put up Christmas decorations? Let's, uh, let's ask, ask, ask the production staff here. Harrison, when is it okay to put up Christmas decorations? Okay, Alicia, after Thanksgiving. Dylan, not paying attention, so Dylan doesn't get an answer. You guys were correct. JMS97 also right. It's after Thanksgiving. It really annoys me way more than it should when I see all this Christmas stuff up in October or in early November. Now, the one exception is, and this is what I do, is once you hang your interior Christmas lights, it is acceptable to leave them up year-round. That's fine because you're just lazy. That's totally fine. It adds, adds a nice ambiance. But when you're putting up the bulk of your Christmas stuff, has to come in after Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is its own special holiday. It deserves some respect. All right, Leroy Pearson, as we go back to the actual questions here. I'm glad so many people agree with me, by the way. It's great. 
What are the chances of our defense and especially special teams getting better with this tough stretch? Um, <laughs> I don't have that much confidence in special teams. The, the defense I feel a little bit better about. I think they've shown flashes there. So defense, I'm going to be optimistic, say 60%. Um, but special teams, eh, 35, I just, I don't, I don't trust it. All right, Greg Zeigler, if I got that wrong, I'm, I'm very sorry, Greg. Uh, how about using Elliott with Pollard more often? Yes, I, I am totally on board with this. If you watched our most recent video, I kind of showed you some examples of how the Cowboys have done that. It's it's 20 personnel. It's two two running backs, zero tight ends. That's how the, that's how the, the personnel numbering works. I think using Pollard and Zeke is a great idea. It takes Witten off the field, gets Pollard on there, who can play some slash if you really need him to as well. And I think teams respect the motion a lot more from Tony Pollard than they do Tavon Austin. So I say use them both. You can use Zeke as a lead blocker. You can use one of them as a distraction. You can throw it. You can run it. You can be creative with those two. That is exactly what I would do if I were the Dallas Cowboys. All right, next up from Calvin Trotman. If I got your name right. Who can we get at the DT position this offseason? Is there a need or a free agency type deal? Um, I don't know what the Cowboys will do. I think they could add a veteran type guy at DT. But they're not going to spend big money, if that's what you mean by free agency. They're, they're not going to throw a bunch of dollars at a, at a good defensive tackle. I don't think that's the route they'll take. I think they might find a Christian Covington type caliber of player. Draft, though, I think makes a lot of sense. And here's my biggest point. And we'll break this down a lot in depth once the season ends. So everyone, you know, make sure you're subscribed here. The Cowboys have to invest in the defensive line. Also, I, I guess I got your name right, Calvin. So I'm really sorry about or wrong about that. I'm sorry. You have to add somebody because you cannot enter this year with Malik Collins, a free agent. Tyrone Crawford may be gone. Uh, Chris Cunningham is a free agent. I think Woods is an RFA. You can't enter the season with Woods and Hill. You have to add another three technique, and it might have to be early in the draft, which makes that Tristan Hill pick really in danger of being a bust. All right, Rife K wants to know, who do you think will make the Pro Bowl for the Cowboys? I, I'll be honest, I haven't even looked at the voting yet. Uh, I don't really care about the Pro Bowl. Uh, it's not really a, a thing I, I care about. Uh, Dak's going to make it. Amari Cooper's going to make it. Pretty sure Frederick was leading the way on the offensive line, if, if I did see that part correctly. Uh, you might get one of your linebackers in just on name brand. Quinn or Demarcus Lawrence might get in. We'll see if Byron Jones gets in. But uh, there will be Cowboys players in the Pro Bowl, unless, of course, they make the Super Bowl. And then you don't want anybody in because you don't have to play. That's my mindset there. All right, today's show is brought to you by chatsports.com slash Bet, that's bet DSI. Head over to chatsports.com slash bet. Use that promo code Cowboys120 for a 120% deposit bonus. You put down 50 bucks, they're going to give you 60 for free. It's chatsports.com slash bet. That links to the chat right now for you guys. Thank you, Harrison. Use that promo code Cowboys120. DJ47 with a really good question here. What are the odds we let Dak use his legs this week similar to to the Ravens game plan. I'm on board. I think that's a good idea. Dak isn't Lamar Jackson as, as a quarterback. That's not a bad thing necessarily, by the way. But he can move. He can run. I would hope you see a little bit more re, read options for the Cowboys. Maybe even some design runs. Why do the Cowboys get so much grief about their schedule when the Patriots have almost the exact schedule plus teams from the AFC? I don't know why teams get grief for their schedule anyway. You, you, it's the NFL. There really aren't very many ge gimme games. Right, Jets? Like, you play the teams you have. You get some bad breaks one year. You get some good breaks the next year. That was the case last year. Cowboys schedule wasn't that tough. It's the nature of it. Patriots, Niners, Cowboys have the, the toughest schedule. There you go. All right, Chef Boy RG Toilolo. After playing the Lions, should we regret letting that running back go. You mean Bo Scarborough? I was waiting for a Bo Scarborough question. I mean, he averaged like four yards per carry against the run defense. It's frankly pretty darn bad. I, who would you rather have, Bo Scarborough or Tony Pollard? We're all picking Tony Pollard, right? Like, 
Bo is on team number four. He got a chance. He made some nice plays. He's, he's nothing special, though. And once Carrion John Johnson gets back, Bo's getting phased out in an instant. Winston Shan, how worried are you about the Cowboys' defense against the Patriots' offense? I'm at a six, especially with the Patriots' screen game and Edelman. Patriots do like to run screens, and the Cowboys have been roasted by screens so far this year. Um, so we'll see. I might be at a seven. That's a, I, 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 I trust Belichick to find a way to do, to do the best. Maybe overall as a team, I'm at a seven. Maybe the defense I feel a better because the Patriots' offense, frankly, hasn't been at its best in the past. By the way, for Edelman, I do think you will see Jordan Lewis on him. I think that's a matchup that it's a tough one, but I think Lewis can handle his own. I, I don't want Byron Jones on Edelman. I don't think that's a favorable matchup for, for Byron. Keep him on the outside. Let Lewis run the slot there. But everyone in the comments, if you guys already are, let me know. Scale 1 to 10. You feel about that Cowboys defense. Now, while you're typing in your answers here, I got a deal for you guys that I found for you on Fanatics. Cowboys jerseys on sale everywhere. Chatsports.com slash Cowboy jersey. We'll get that link. It's in the description, and it's in the comments right now, too. Chatsports.com slash Cowboys jersey. All kinds of Cowboys jerseys are on sale. That Color Rush one you just saw. The, the Amari Cooper ones. Dak Prescott ones. All kinds of jerseys are on sale right now. Just head over to chatsports.com slash Cowboys jersey. You'll see a gigantic list of them. It is the perfect gift this holiday season for yourself or a loved one. We got you covered at chatsports.com slash Cowboys jersey. Sebastian Schaefer, do you put Jarwin ahead of Witten? Especially on passing downs, yes. Look, Jason Witten, I love him. First ballot Hall of Famer. One of the best tight ends to ever play the game. You can call him the GOAT if you want. I certainly have before. But he ain't the same guy. Now, he's still a better blocker than Blake Jarwin. But the Cowboys are a passing team right now. You let Jarwin eat. Let Dak sling it to him. It works out way better. All right, Lake Hams. With the Patriots having a bad run defense, does Zeke get the chance to blow up or do the Patriots like the Lions and Vikings force the ball into Dak's hands by attacking Zeke. Well, I, I actually don't know if... Uh, I mean, I, I guess they kind of forced the ball into Dak's hands overall, but the Patriots' run defense has been a bit of an issue, but they've also done a great job of forcing plays. And I, I don't even know if it's fair to call them bad. They're top 10 in, in rushing yards allowed this year. So, like... Compared to their secondary, yes, the run defense is worse than the pass defense. I, I am sure teams will try to make the quarterback beat you. That's just the easier route. You want to make a team one-dimensional. But I think they'll still try to run the football a little bit overall. All right, Anthony Meatball. Should Kellen Moore steal the Edelman touchdown pass and call it Sunday? Anthony, the Patriots or the Cowboys have already run that play. They tried the Randall Cobb touchdown pass. Didn't actually work out in the end. So I will just let your star quarterback throw it. That's kind of my mindset there overall. It's the best way to go there. All right, Anthony Griffin, did you hear about the person who was watching the Cowboys practice? He throws in the hashtag uh, Spygate. So just so some added behind-the-scenes stuff here. There was a person who was like on one of the, the, the roofs like uh, over by the star outside watching practice. I'm actually going to go with this. Pretty sure it wasn't the Patriots because they wouldn't be that brazen about it. Like he is very clearly visible. Probably more likely it was a guy who worked in the building, was on his smoke break watching practice. That makes a lot more sense to me than the, the, the Patriots are watching practice. However, they are the... the they are cheaters. So, just type cheat in the comments. Harrison's on point right now. Just type cheat in the comments because they are the cheatriots. That's who they are. Once a cheater, always a cheater. That's just the nature of life there. Oscar Holly, would it be, user, would it be a better idea to run more Zeke or Tony Pollard against the Patriots' run defense? The answer is, of course, to use both of them. But you, between the two, 
you still roll with Zeke Elliott. I know Pollard's going to be a bit more effective, but Elliott's the guy I think you have to go with in the end. All right, now you guys start typing in cheat. I appreciate it. Also, predict the score in the comments. Cowboys at Patriots. It's a six and a half point spread in favor of those same Patriots. So let me know in the comments what your score prediction is. Stay tuned later on in the show. We will get to mine for you guys as well. So just keep that in mind. Cowboys at the Patriots this week. Here. Hey, Cowboys fans. Thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.